Hey, sorry for the interruption, but we wanted to let you know that this week's episode is brought to you by Spotify for Podcasters. Really cool app. Josiah and I use it for every single show that we bring to you every week. You can edit podcasts right from your phone or computer so you can start creating as soon as you log into the platform. You can easily distribute your podcasts to Spotify and everywhere else the podcasts are heard, just like we do every single week. You can also create video podcasts on Spotify, which is really cool. And of course, you can earn money like I'm doing right now by including ads and even podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free. There's no catch. We really love it. We use it every single week. So we encourage you to go download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. All right, let's get back to the show. Radical. Welcome to this week's episode of the Print on Demand cast. Each week, join the gnarly Travis and Josiah as they provide insight into the print on demand industry and equip you with the totally tubular tools, advice, and strategies you need to achieve success and hopefully have a few laughs along the way. Now, on to this week's totally tubular show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the two year anniversary episode of the print on demand cast we made it mm-hmm. and we're excited to be with you live do us a favor if you're here live with us uh drop a comment in the comment section let us know say hi where you're watching from and uh, we will be sure to uh shout you out from here and uh, bring your bring your best dad joke we already told you this but it was going to be a prerequisite so <laughs> with that being said, we're going to just bring on, we're going to start right away. This whole thing is going to be very casual, very conversational, uh, a lot of fun, uh, as it always is with our guest who has been with us at all the milestones and teams. He was here for the one year and he is back now for the two year anniversary of the show. Welcome back to the print on demand cast, Chris Green. Chris, as always, sporting <laughs> sunglasses and ready to just have a good time, man. Thank you for uh, making time and uh, coming back on the show. Oh, you bet, dude. Like, thanks. I appreciate the intro, Josiah and Travis. Dude, I think you had short hair when you started this <laughs> I did. On the podcast, right? But yeah, two years, I mean, was... that's like a big deal. That's like a big milestone. Most of podcasts, most of businesses, most everything to get started doesn't make it one year, let alone two years. So give yourself right. some credit for this. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Man. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's, yeah. We, we talk about it a lot where we didn't really anticipate it going this long. But uh, we're yeah. certainly happy that it has. We've had a lot of fun doing it. So uh, it's good times, man. What's new with you? What is going on in the world of Chris Green? What do you have? What cookie jars do you have your hands in these days, Chris? I, I got my hands in like a lot of things, which is like not good because like you can't do too <laughs> many things. Right. So I have I've been I don't know. I probably juggled like 20 different things for a while. Uh, and then like learned along the way that you can't do 20 different things well. But then there are like some things that are like. I can't let this one go. This one, this one's like really good. So I do have like a main thing with a mm-hmm. really cool sub thing that's gotten a lot of popularity. I can tell you guys about. Then I've got a uh, hobby thing that is kind of like a secret, but it's nice. just something I'm excited about. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I've got my kids who are uh, 13 and 15, and mm-hmm. they've kind of found a little niche on Etsy that I'm helping them with. So I'm I'm trying oh, not to cool. be pulled in too many directions, but like. That's really good, but they're going to run it, so I'm going to help them with that. And then, like, what I feel I am best at, I need to spend most of my time on mm-hmm. that. Although that that does have this cool little side thing that I can talk about today that I didn't expect to get into. Um, and then I have my like, secret hobby project. So if I can just focus on those things and not go down too many rabbit holes and like rabbit trail, like right. I mean, you guys know, I think we're like like this this whole community that's around the Amazon world. I think has a lot of people who, are, who have the shiny object syndrome because uh, they like it. You know, they see something that looks mm-hmm. new. And, and with Amazon, there's always something new, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can get distracted in a bad way, uh, which distracted meaning taking away from your main thing uh, instead of like, hey, this is my free time. And I enjoy spending my free time chasing these shiny objects because, you know, some people enjoy, I personally enjoy that. But you have to balance it and keep it under control. Otherwise, 
all you're doing is pretending or thinking that you're being productive. You think, oh, I'm doing something that, you know, could turn into something. Like, mm-hmm. no, right. Yeah, technically you're correct, but it's at the expense of what you really should be doing. Yeah, I, I think it's important to also to just here at the outset, if you haven't ever met Chris or haven't heard any of the shows with him on it, he's not necessarily uh, just a print on demand guy. He's more you're more of just an entrepreneurial guy who just does a lot of different things. And some of them happen to be in the print on demand space. Would you is that fair to say? I, I would say I, I don't like even calling myself an entrepreneur because entrepreneur has like a better definition. Like I am not great at building and running businesses. I am great at spotting opportunity. Um, mm-hmm. And I've gotten great over the past 20 years of spotting opportunities and using social media and being you know members of groups and running events and all these things of kind of helping people uh, kind of find their, I guess, find their niche is one thing, but also find their confidence, help them overcome imposter syndrome. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I, everybody can do something. Now, I don't say everybody can do this. Is that everybody can do print on demand? You know, technically everybody could. It's not yeah. a great match for everybody, right? FBA might be a better match. Arbitrage might be a better match. Uh, Self publishing, mm-hmm. or, or like, there are so many different things. And since I've been exposed to like practically all of them, uh, I find that I've gotten really good at. If, they could, if I'm coaching somebody, I'll get them on the right track and get them moving forward. And it's yeah. not a Hey, talk to me and I'll tell you how to do FBA. Like you can Google how to do FBA, but I'll tell you if FBA is a good match for you based on your skills, your strengths, your budget, your mm-hmm. location, your goals, like all of these different things. Cause not everybody's trying to make a million bucks. A lot of people be thrilled to make 500 bucks a month. And that's mm-hmm. a heck of a lot easier than trying to make a million dollars a year doing something right. that you might not even like. So that's, that's where like my 20 year journey has kind of taken me at, at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would say you're really good at it. I mean, I've known you for, <clears throat> since early days for me in FBA and you, it wasn't, you had been in it for a while. And I think I met you at your, one of your scan power conferences. And um, that was early days for me. I was you know, probably only a couple of years in, we were getting ready to do the Rocky mountain reseller conference that, which was where I eventually heard about sublimation and really kind of started me on my print journey. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been an interesting uh, journey for sure. Uh, I think, and a lot of the people I knew back then are doing different things. You know, they've opened mattress stores or they're completely out of Amazon altogether. Or, you know, I mean, the list I never followed on on. the mattress store thing. Like, I heard like so, like so many people I kind of knew, but like didn't talk to on a daily basis. Were like, yeah, they're doing the mattress store thing. And I'm like, what is so attractive about this mattress? Like, I never got into it. I don't know. The margins, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the I guess, but like, unless you really like face-to-face sales and, mm-hmm. and movie match, like, like if you get that call, you're like, Hey, I want to buy a mattress. And you're like, Oh, and like, you're not happy about it. Then, <laughs> yes. You're, you've got the margins, but you're not enjoying it. You're not having fun. Um, and to me, that that's, I, I made a whole chapter in my, in my book about it, where I do believe people are missing the opportunity to realize that they can make money doing something they like and that they consider to be fun. And I think it's a, mm. for mm-hmm. most people, it's a mental thing. They're like, no, work is something that I don't like to do. I mm. do it because I get paid. You know, maybe you like your job, but you're literally not doing it if you don't get paid. Yeah. Fun stuff, you don't get paid for because you're going to do it anyway, right? <laughs> and I would make this the claim. I would put this out there. You can do things that you would like to do. You would do anyway and get paid for it. Yeah. But if you don't believe that, then you're really going to struggle kind of getting yourself in. Because even if you kind of start and set it up internally, you don't believe it. So you will self-sabotage yeah. yourself somehow because you don't actually believe it. But say, I've done this long enough and I, I know what that feels like because I've been there. But you can mm-hmm. you can get out of it. You can change the way that you see things. But I, I think, Travis, I love your story because you have done so many different things. Mm-hmm. And then you've kind of settled into something that I guess you would say you're good at, you enjoy. It has enough margin to make it worth doing uh, compared to the things you're doing at the very beginning of like hearing about mm-hmm. Amazon and FBA and like, all this opportunity to do things yeah. um you know you did the reseller conference but like I, I don't think you consider yourself a reseller now now you're just not anymore no. a seller right you sell <laughs> your own stuff instead of having to sell someone yeah. else's stuff and they're they're mm-hmm. all just different ways to have some kind of you know online business where you can make money a little bit or or a lot depending on you know the products the skill set the everything that goes into it uh, but the opportunities are out there. And I, again, that's where I think I, I help people the most is helping people identify the best opportunity for them 
because mm-hmm. you're going to be absolutely overwhelmed. Imagine Googling how to make money on the internet. Oh, I know. It smokes. What, yeah. like, crazy. What are you going to do? Like, just how to make money on Amazon or eBay or, or like, oh my gosh. Like, mm-hmm. you'd be absolutely overwhelmed. And I would bet a lot of those things just people don't get excited about. Like, I got back into yard sales and like, I'm having a blast, right? I bought some baby <laughs> Jordans for five bucks. <laughs> Uh, that they, <laughs> baby Jordans, who knew they sell for like 40, 50, 60, 70, yeah. 80, 90 dollars. Wow. <laughs> and I'm just going to give them to my niece, but like it's the thrill of the hunt, it's the fun part, right? Like, yeah, is it worth my time? Like, sort of, like, I enjoy doing it though. Uh, mm-hmm. I would do it even if I didn't find anything. Uh, I would do it if I don't make money. Most of the times, I don't sell the stuff that I, I find, I like put it in a pile and tell my kids to sell it when they want some money because I just like the, the hunt <laughs> of it. But I know myself, yeah. and I know there's other people out there that would hate that. Like, oh my gosh, get up early on a Saturday, go to garage <laughs> sales, like have to interact with other people. Like, no, it's they shouldn't be doing that. They can find something else where they don't have to interact with people. Like print on demand on Amazon for Pete's sakes. There's zero customer service. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? A customer can't contact you if they want to. You can disappear <laughs> off the face of the earth and your business is still running. You know, so like those are the things. So I get I feel there's so many options out there that people get overwhelmed. And I don't know. I, I even podcasts like this, I think, help people uh, to kind of hear what's out there, hear from different people, different perspectives. And that gives them you know, the value proposition of like, oh, there's more out there. I'm thank, thank you, Josiah. Thank you, Travis. Thank you for like telling me about print on demand and sublimation. I didn't know these things existed because yeah. I think yeah. we take it for granted. Right. Like, you sure. Think, oh, everybody knows how to do this. Like, no, they don't. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, w- when we've had conversations in the past, um, I remember you telling me like. Um, just kind of reminding me, it's like, you, you know, so much more than you realize, Travis, you, you said that to me so much more than you realize. And I, I've, I've, I've held on to that. And I, that's one of the reasons we started this podcast or kept going with it because we do right. realize that we have, um, you only need to be one, one step ahead of somebody to, to lead them. You know, you, you don't have to be super far down the road and, you know, you don't have to have all the answers. You just need to have some of them. And then the humility to say that you don't know everything. And that makes, I think that qualifies you as somebody who can lead, you know, somebody who can share what they have and help others, um, which is what leadership is. It's really just serving others, you know, with what you've learned and the, <laughs> and uh, sharing some of the pain along the way, you know, that you've yeah. experienced, um, so that they perhaps don't, don't fall in the same hole that you fell in. <laughs> well, they can learn from your mistakes, which is the exactly. thing. Like, hey guys, I've made this mistake. So don't do it this way. Mm-hmm. Like, and then they don't make that mistake. And they like, they, they have a, a benefit in their business they're like, and they look to you to like, so they remember Travis. Yeah. Travis was the guy that like, you know, helped me not make that mistake. And like, now they're going to look up to you, you know, kind of forever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a similar thing like what you said where people they don't give themselves enough credit for the things that they know i try right. to help people by by giving them this question like it's whatever they're an expert in say like, you know i got a guy who's who's uh putting out content to be a triathlon coach he's a certified ironman coach he's run like a 100 mm-hmm. triathlons uh and i was like if someone wanted to run their first triathlon and had a bunch of questions do you think you could help them he's like yeah of course i was like do, do you get it now like <laughs> when you first got started what would you pay to be able to, mm-hmm. to basically hang out in person and ask questions for an hour with someone who has completed 100 triathlons and is a certified Ironman coach. You're like, oh, yeah. dude, I pay a lot of wow. money for that. I was like, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he doesn't see it at first. Now he kind of sees it, but it took, it took literally years to see us, which is why I, I always put out there for people, have patience because you can mm-hmm. see something. And if you want to believe it, you can't just flip the switch in your head. It takes yeah. time to really change beliefs about how to run a business at home, like what the opportunities really are. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people have the wrong ideas in their heads. So they have to you know, kind of slowly change those beliefs because I've seen it. It, it takes time. It's not just going to happen, but I'll share these examples and these stories. So people are like, you know what? I am really good at, you know, kind of just organizing a garage. If you're good at organizing garages, as simple as that sounds, <laughs> you can give value to people and you can write a book and you can, like, it's, you can yeah. put out content on YouTube and Instagram. You can search for people who are like overwhelmed with their garage and you can put out flyers. Like it's not that hard, Yeah, um, mm-hmm. but you're good at anything, but you have to like kind of, you have to get them to see like, wait a minute, I do have value to offer and get them over the, Oh, but someone else is better. Yeah. So what? Who cares? Oh, someone else has already done it. Yeah. So what? Who cares? Like 
<laughs> excuse after excuse. This is like the culmination of like 20 years of like talking to people in this space of like, for Pete's sakes, I see all the problems. So I'm trying to like sum them all up and like put them out there to be like, guys, mm-hmm. this this is why you guys are not winning on Amazon and eBay and all these things. Because you're chasing the wrong things. You have the wrong goals. You think you're going to make a million dollars with a hundred dollar budget to flip stuff. Like, it, no, get realistic and and stop following like they, they call it like hustle porn on on instagram oh now, yeah right you can always keep <laughs> hustling you can keep hustling yeah but you have to have like a real plan okay and there's a lot of plans out there and you can't do them all um uh, i do think people should try a few right like if you want to try scanning at, at retail stores if you want to try online arbitrage techniques if you want mm-hmm. to you know try your hand at print on demand at, at, at self-publishing go for it and then find yeah. the one that suits you best that suits your goals that suits your talents um, if you want to make a million dollars, I would rather sell books than t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can put more value into a book than you can into a t-shirt. Sure. You know? right. Unless you're like Kanye West, of course, you know, um, but anyway, but I, think I'm, people, I'm, I'm, I'm I, rambling. I think people, I think people are talk or, uh, considering kind of how low the branch is, you know, to get that fruit and, you know, getting a merch account and putting some designs up. That's pretty, that's a pretty low barrier of entry compared to writing a whole book or at least yeah. I think in people's minds. And I know you've talked about, you know, lo, you know, we've talked about low content books and things like that and using, uh, you know, big fonts and, you know, <laughs> some of the tricks, you know, um, <laughs> it doesn't, I guess, have to be so overwhelming, but I think when you say, Hey, Travis, you should write a book. I mean, that just, that blows me away that, you know, and it's kind of that, <laughs> how, do, how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time, <laughs> you know, one chapter at a time is how you write a book, but still, man, that's, that's intense. What am I going to say? What am I going to say next? You know, you've already done 200 episodes of a podcast, right? Okay. Yeah. Take your top 10 <laughs> by mm-hmm. views, by downloads, by whatever, transcribe them yourself or send it over to rev.com or someone on Fiverr. Like just get it transcribed. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now mm-hmm. you have a book, 10 chapters, and all it is is the podcast transcription, right? And at the front of the page or the you know the, the beginning of the chapter, it's got a QR code that goes to you know an unlisted YouTube replay or a link to the Facebook group. Sure. You just have this book that you sell for twenty dollars, but now you have something you can give away. You can use as a prize. You can use as like kind of as a as a prize for people who sign up for your email list, right? Like, mm-hmm. hey, sign up for my email list. I'm giving away five copies of the book today. It's a twenty dollar anchor price on Amazon because it's a book, and people expect to pay you know sometimes twelve, fifteen, twenty dollars for a book. Uh, mm-hmm. Costs you nothing, right? It only gets printed and shipped if somebody orders it. You can order author copies for like two dollars and fifty cents. You can even have Amazon ship an author copy to an individual address in eight different countries. Uh, so it'd be like under six dollars delivered, and you don't have to touch it. You don't have to leave your house, right? <laughs> It's all there. And like, you've already got the content now. And that's exactly what you said is a barrier to most people where they say, Oh, I can't mm-hmm. write a book. Uh, I, I'm not Stephen King. I can't write the next Harry Potter. And I'm like, I can't either. That's not the kind right. of books I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just saying the opportunity is there. And, and I love the challenge format. And I mean, we've done you know self-publishing challenges and merch challenges, uh, mm-hmm. but like getting that first book published, even if it's a low content, like notebook or journal type product that helps people with that, that confidence. They're like, Holy smokes. I am a published author. I yeah. have a product page on Amazon for a physical product. And when it sells, I don't have to do any work and I'm going to get money. And Amazon's going to like print it and ship it. When people, when that light bulb goes off, when that switch flips in their head, that's, that's a big change. That's like the, one of the belief changes. They're like, holy smokes, this is powerful. I shouldn't sleep on this. And like, it's been there. Like for a mm-hmm. decade, it's been sitting there saying, "Hey, I'm over here. If anybody, uh, you know, <laughs> wants to stop sleeping on me, because uh, this is a good opportunity." Yeah. So I mean, that's that's what I like. To, I like to kind of, I I really enjoy helping people kind of get that little that little boost. It, it's almost like a, like getting a hit. Like when you when you scan something and, and like, oh my gosh, this book's worth 120 dollars. Like you get that like chemical that goes off in your brain. And you want to keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that that's what I try to do. Like at the end of a challenge, and I think like most people try to do by the end of a challenge, have a clearly defined goal at the end of the challenge. Hey, this is like amazing. And like Chris Green's the best for showing me how to do this. And I'm like, I showed you how to do it for free on YouTube and Facebook, but like, Hey, if it took a challenge <laughs> to finally make you do it, <laughs> sure. 
And there's a whole chapter about, yeah, you have to pay for things if they're free. Nobody values it. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> I've, I've seen awesome. it all over 20 years. And uh, yeah. I've gotten pretty, I, I got pretty good at helping people uh, or spot excuses. I'm like, oh yeah, but I'm not a designer. Well, have you heard of Fiverr? You know, like, like mm-hmm. give me a break. Like, I don't know how to make a cover. Can you Google it? Can you use Canva? Like, every excuse. <laughs> it, I, I don't know. I've known people long enough that I call them out for their excuses now. Like, sure. I'll get a little hard on them. Um, but, you know, I, I don't do that for, like, you know, somebody new. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. But the opportunities right. are there, and the excuses are rampant. But, you know, the ones who, who get over it, you know, they, they're the ones who, I mean, you've seen success story after success story you know, in this mm-hmm. space. People who came from nothing, and now they're doing, you know, either – big numbers in terms of sales or just you know having a great time in terms of just the overall success that they're having. They're not trying to yeah. make that, you know, million dollar mark and all this nonsense. Right. Yeah. Um, they're, they're trying to have financial security and do something they enjoy. Like that's what people should be doing. Cause you can make a million dollars and be miserable. Right. Yep. <laughs> it does. It sounds like, Oh, I'd rather, I'd love to be miserable with a million dollars. It's like, yeah, I get it. But uh, it's a lot easier to be happy making enough money. And when mm-hmm. lots of places in the country do making a hundred grand, you, you can live like a king off a hundred yeah, right. in a yeah. lot of the country. Yeah. And that's very achievable in my mind in uh, doing something you actually like. If you know how to put the pieces together behind the scenes of a print on demand product or building an email list and marketing mm-hmm. a podcast, all things that are completely free. Yeah. yeah. They don't cost any money, but they, they cost your time. They cost your effort. And right. another chapter in the book is how people are not willing to do things unless they're getting paid because they come from a nine to five trade my time for dollars background. Sure. And what what book them, are you hey, talking about? Oh, Tell us about your the, book. The, <laughs> it's in the way too long. I was like, it's oh, a really okay. short book. Like, no, it's because <laughs> everything I wrote, I was like, oh, I'll have to explain this. Oh, they're not gonna make sense unless I write this. So it kept yeah. going back and like, it just kind of added everything. So it's definitely kind of overkill. Um, but I, I try to call out those excuses of like so many people come from that nine to five. Right. I, I, when I, cause to me, writing a book is front loading the work. Like anything around print on demand, you're yeah. front loading the work. You yeah. got to make right. these designs. You got to you put in this time and you're not getting paid. You're getting paid zero dollars an hour to do those things. Mm-hmm. But you're working for yourself for zero dollars an hour and you're making a, uh, a what's the word that I use? In the book? An asset. Uh, yeah, you're making a digital asset. Mm-hmm. valuable digital asset that can be sold over and over and over again that you own and control and have trademark and copyright over that nobody can compete with you on. Yeah. But you have to be willing to put in the work to do it. And the first one is not going to be the best. Sorry. <laughs> Your second book is going to be better, you know, and then you go back yeah. to the first book and update it and just send the updates to Amazon and it's all good. Uh, but I would holy wow. I would so much rather work for myself for free trying to mm-hmm. you know, create something of value that I own and control compared to sitting there and being like, yeah, well, if I'm not going to get paid to work for myself, I'm just not going to do it. I'm like, well, then you're not going to do it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't try to convince people into any of this stuff because it's a waste of time. Uh, but right. you tell them, you show them what's out there and the ones that are like, you know what? I, I can tell he he's serious. I can tell he actually enjoys this. This is a great example of something. I like this. I enjoy talking about this. You don't have to pay me to come on your podcast <laughs> and talk about print on demand and Amazon FBA. Like I enjoy it. Not everybody does, right? A lot of people, sure. my family and, and friends and neighbors, like, oh, well, you shut up. Like <laughs> they don't care about the stuff that I care about. I just find this yeah. stuff fun and fascinating and, and you know, I want to share it with people because it's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people hate their jobs. Uh, I'm like, you could do this instead, but they don't believe it. You know, and, sure. and they've got the hang ups of the the nine to five mindset and the it takes too much of my all of them. And I like I said, I, I put all the excuses that I know of uh, in different chapters in the book to help people get over it but mm-hmm. we'll That's see awesome. we'll see how many people actually get over it how yeah, long is so that? i was just gonna say for the audio um the name of your book is the author our authorpreneur blueprint is that correct authorpreneur blueprint it's on amazon it's expensive uh, but it's basically a, an all-inclusive course that you buy the book, you get access to all the course material that, you know, behind the scenes, not, not behind the scenes, but like the video content, yeah. it's password mm-hmm. protected and unlisted. Uh, you all you know, get access to all of that through the book. Uh, I'm in the process of writing a shorter version of it um, just to explain, you know, what I would call the opportunity to be an author printer. Um, mm-hmm. because I think, I mean, that, that's a great word to describe. Wait a minute. I'm an entrepreneur. I, I'm, I want to start a business. 
but you're using books as your product, specifically print on demand books, and more mm -hmm. specifically, prime eligible on Amazon in international marketplaces, print on demand books as your product, right? And your product, mm -hmm. it just has to have some kind of value. So what, what are you giving access to in your book? Is it access to digital content? Is it access to the backlog issues of the podcast? Maybe you only put, mm -hmm. you know, your past three months of podcast uh, episodes public. Everything yeah. else is for members only. Uh, and they can become mm -hmm. a member of your private community through buying the book or access to a Facebook group or digital downloads. You know, if you're doing print on demand products, hey, get digital downloads. These are editable templates that you can use on this and this and this. You get those through the links that are exclusively found in the book. And that's what you're, yeah. that's yeah. kind of like the message that I really want people to have is you're giving access. What can you give access to through the printed pages of a book? Because then you you take that access and now you've got this product on Amazon that you're publishing through KDP. It's a little mm -hmm. bit like a two step process in your head to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm say it again, really slow kind of thing. But <laughs> once people get it, they're like, you mean I could offer Facebook group access through a book? And I'm like, yes, I said it like twelve times. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they get it, right? So I, I don't. I'm not trying to be down on them. But like it happens. Like like they find. I've yeah. been saying this for years. Anything you can give access to. And like I say, digital files, downloads, templates. Templates are an easy one in the merch. Uh, mm. Merch by Amazon, just print on demand, anything. Yeah. Go on Fiverr or Upwork. Find someone to make you editable templates of anything you want. Um, make political. Make political digital assets that people can use for and market it as, hey, the election's coming up and use all these digital assets to you know make you can make a Republican one and a Democrat one. I would just put them all together, to be honest. Actually, I'd, I'd probably separate them because they'd be easier to market. Yeah, um, but buy one get one free if you want. Like, who cares? <laughs> but if you can have someone else make these things and give you full rights to them, and then and then you sell them as a digital asset, you could you know you could have it on Gumroad. Say, but if you buy the book, I'll give you a, there's a hundred percent coupon code that'll work on right. Gumroad, and and then you're completely hands off, and it's all automatically delivered, and it signs you up with the email list. And it's all these things. That none of it's hard. None of it costs money, but it's just complicated enough that people aren't putting these things together on their own. Sure. So that's why I like to put information out there and, and say, like, guys, there's a big opportunity here. It's a little complicated, but it's not anything that you can't do. Yeah. But it, it, the biggest hurdle is the mindset thing to be like, is it really work this way? Like, why isn't everybody doing this? And everybody's mm -hmm. not doing it because they're sleeping on it. You know, they, they're yeah. making the excuses. But writing a book's too hard. Someone's already done it. It must be too expensive. No, no, and no. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't try to convince anybody. How much, how many, uh, like, you, you, you're talking about Fiverr and you're talking about having people do different things for you. And um, what percentage of this whole kind of process are you um, having, are you outsourcing? Are you having virtual assistants, you know, do for you or, or is it, and is it mostly kind of gig economy where it's just like a one-off task or do you actually recommend or, or have you considered, you know, or do you have actual virtual assistants either part-time or full-time working for you on some of the back-end stuff? I don't have any VAs working for me. I don't think I've ever had, to be honest. Really? Um, wow. yeah. And it's, I probably should. Um, I don't, yes, I'm not, you I wouldn't call myself should. A, I wouldn't call myself a control <laughs> freak, but I do write every, <laughs> every word in my books I write, right? There's, there's yeah. no outsourcing. Mm -hmm. um, I have hired people off, uh, I, I've had design pickle, um, and, and send over like a whole bunch of like design requests that would come back as editable files. Uh, I've got one. I did. I haven't released it because I've had other projects going on. Uh, but I had them make replica uh, Photoshop images, layered PSD files of every single license plate for every single state, including Washington wow. D.C. Uh, so I have it all here as a zip file. It's all. It includes all the fonts. Uh, wow. And people could use it for you know KDP mileage journals or you know, if someone has their, they, they could take orders on Etsy and say like, what, what, what name do you want on a Wyoming license plate? And mm -hmm. then print it on a t-shirt or print mm -hmm. it on a, on, on anything that you want. Um, and I, I need to, I should, that's probably something I should hire a VA for is take all the files and put them into like a kind of a 50 page printable, you know, so you can kind of see what they look like. So the book has like a little more than like one page of like, here's the download link, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and put it out there and, and use it as a bonus. When you join the entrepreneur challenge, you get this and you also get the license plate book and all the, you know, the things. Mm -hmm. um, so I have used design. I'll, for that. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll use it. <laughs> uh, I've used Fiverr for different things. I've worked directly with some, some 
kind of higher end artists to say, hey, you know, if you make images like this, like every single week, I will buy them from you every single week. Um, I was doing that with uh, with uh, some Trump images for a while when he was still president. Um, like, you know, like like the Trump with the machine gun and the flag and he's riding on the tank and there's like, mm-hmm. you know, rockets in the background. <laughs> yes, like, yeah. Images like that. Right. Like the mm-hmm. higher end, like complicated stuff. And so I, I had this play and I got like a whole bunch of images. But then I was like, well, if everybody has the exact same image on March. That's not going to work as well. And I kind of overthought it and I just kind of never put it out there. Um, but it, it, these are the types of ideas that anybody can do, right? Like, like politics isn't going anywhere. It's only going to get, I don't want to say more polarizing, but it's definitely going to be more, uh, you know, in the, in the news kind of thing where people are going to be mm-hmm. talking about it, not just on election years. Uh, so if yeah. you're going to buy political stuff, you know, so you can sell political stuff. It doesn't matter where you fall politically. You can sell both. You can sell one and mm-hmm. sell the other. doesn't matter. Uh, you can stay anonymous with print on demand products. So, you know, there's, there's opportunities there. So like, I, I do think people should kind of figure out what opportunity they want and then say, it doesn't make sense. Can I make these images? Cause I, I talked to a lot of people who have a great, you know, uh, graphic design background, but they, they're trying to do retail arbitrage cause they've never heard of merch by Amazon. Mm-hmm. So once they hear that and then they wait and then they're like, Oh, I can do merch by Amazon. I was like, well, if you're really good, if I were you, I would make some you know, templates. You could make like border templates for Instagram you know, video creators, you can make uh, templates for literally anything. If you're a graphic designer, then use KDP to have those products out there that you can you know, use as giveaways. You can send them as gifts to people because I have this physical product. Um, there's just so many things you can do. Um, mm-hmm. Almost almost too many, which is why, like, I think helping people one-on-one uh, is the best way. It's just not scalable. That's Sure. Yeah, that's sure. The only problem. But podcasts like this, at least a lot of people can listen in and be like, Hopefully some people kind of get the idea like, oh, I, that makes sense. I want to explore that a little more. And they'll join some mm-hmm. Facebook groups. They'll ask a question in, in the print on demand uh, cast Facebook group and, you know, kind of get some advice from people. Yeah. That's awesome. Speaking of Josiah. Was, yeah. So let's shout out some of the people in the comment section we have. So if you're in the comment section, you have to give StreamYard, which is the software we're using permission to display your name because everyone comes up as Facebook user. So, uh, but, but that being said, <laughs> I do know that this is from Fiona Darcy. Chris, this is a avid listener to this show from Australia who is, I don't even know what time it is over there, uh, but she is it's early. I think it's morning. exactly opposite. I think it's eight. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's, she has listened to every episode a mul- multiple of times, which Travis and I think mm-hmm. is just incredible. But um, she says hello and happy birthday. <laughs> Uh, to the print on demand cast <laughs> and uh, she also asked for the link to your book which we dropped in the comments as well so it is 9 30 a.m there in in australia so it's not quite as early as i thought it would be but nonetheless like time zone yeah so hmm. and if you're in the if you're watching uh we did say last week to bring your best dad joke yeah that's and right leave it in the comment section uh, she just bought your book, uh, Chris. Oh, so wow. There's another entrepreneur going all the way to Australia. Um, so that's awesome. That's cool. They, they will print it in Australia and deliver it. Uh, that's they incredible. have a printing facility in Australia. So, so uh, Fiona, thank you for that. And I want to make sure people understand the international opportunity. Even though you're in Australia, um, you can order author copies for your books in U.S., Canada, Australia, UK, Italy, Spain, France, Germany. Oh, I didn't put my pinky up. Yeah, so that's eight. <laughs> eight different countries. You could do this. Uh, it's it's insane. Like the things that you can do. You don't have to be in Australia and be like, oh, like, I can't get the books. I, I Amazon.com doesn't ship all the way over here. It, Amazon is getting closer to their goal of having every product available to anybody in the world within two days or less. And they're doing that wow. by putting print print on demand facilities for things like merchandise and, and and books in different countries and continuing to expand. And anybody that uses these platforms just has to upload a digital file once, and now you're available for sale all over the globe. Like it's it's an incredible opportunity. Uh, it's almost yeah. too good, which which can overwhelm people, um, mm-hmm. kind of prevent them <laughs> from moving forward. So if anybody is stuck, you know, feeling that that overwhelm. You know, there's there's people, everybody on this podcast, we are here to try to help you guys, um, yeah. you know, move forward with, mm-hmm. with something that works really well for you. So, so if you have any questions you have, please, please just reach out and ask. I'm easy to find on Facebook. So how many books do you have now, Chris, that you've produced, published? 
that's a not an easy question to answer because I published dozens of books, but like I wouldn't claim a lot of them as sure. books. As like <laughs> these are the books that I'm known for, and these are the books that I've kind of thrown out there to see what happens. Hmm. Uh, so I published dozens, but I mean retail arbitrage, arbitrage, online arbitrage, uh, the stencil guide was pretty. So I mean, I guess I got maybe known for five books. Okay. Um, but I made is this family friendly show. Fairly friendly, friendly, relatively, uh, yeah, relatively. Okay. When uh, area fifty, remember we're going to raid area fifty one. Remember that? Oh yeah, remember yes, years ago? Mm-hmm. yes. I was I like, sure. all right, this is this is hot. <laughs> Everybody's talking about this. Um, I hired two different uh, ghost writers on Fiverr to write adult themed area fifty one uh, fiction to see if like, <laughs> oh, like boy. oh my gosh, look what someone's done because this adult themed. <laughs> Uh, literature through KDP is a huge, huge market. It's completely allowed, except for the exceptions, where if you have to wonder what the exceptions are, you probably already know what the exceptions are. If you need to look them up, you can look them up. But you can certainly have adult-themed material. Uh, it's a it's a big opportunity. So I put these um, Area 51 stories out there, which both came back like relatively like quality story, like a plot and a like character development, <laughs> all these things, things I would not have put in there for a very affordable <laughs> price. And like, I didn't push it or promote it. Um, you know, but I thought maybe someone would see it and they'd like tweet it out and people like, you'd go kind of crazy on retweets and people would buy it because it was only like yeah. $6.99. Um, but it didn't happen. I, I don't regret the time spent on it, but it was, I'm going to take the time to kind of cook this pasta a little bit and see what yeah. sticks to the wall. And mm-hmm. that's the piece that most people forget. They're not willing to cook the pasta. They're like, let me throw this dry pasta against the wall. Let me just ask my <laughs> friends if they would buy Watch all the an Area break. 51 adult themed book. And they're going to say yes or no. But like, you didn't actually do it. So they can't buy it because you didn't cook the <laughs> pasta, right? You got to cook it a little bit. You got to spend the time. You got to be willing to say yes. This time that I put into this, the money I sent to those two fiber authors was wasted. And yeah. I don't consider it completely wasted because here I am. I'm able to talk about an example of something that didn't work with KDP and people can listen in. They can be like, oh, Chris Green actually knows what he's talking about because he's actually done all these things <laughs> instead of just talking about it. So I don't consider it completely wasted. You know, would I go back in time and do it again? I, honestly, I probably would. But then I'd like actually promote it. I'd be like, the, there is kind of an I thought the upside was worth it for the the downside of the time spent. Right. And I think that's what people need to like stop and think. Okay, what's the potential reward for the risk? Sure. And a lot of people aren't willing to take any risk, you know. But like the big rewards are out there from like these aren't big risks. Like you got like tightrope across like a river and like over like, a crocodile stuff. Like no, this is the risk of like spending your time doing something that's not making you money. That's kind of what the risk is, right? Learning about these things, reading books, like watching educational videos instead of uh, entertainment videos. That's the risk, and that's the risk people aren't willing to take. Sure. Yeah, come on, guys. You got to take a little, take some risks here. <laughs> try to upload a uh, some kind of book to Amazon and see what happens. Sure. And if nothing else, you'll learn the process. You'll be like, wow, that actually was really easy. Uh, you know what? I, what else could I publish? And now you've got that bug of like, I like doing this. This is interesting. And then you kind of join this little world that we have of like Amazon sellers and, and hustlers and entrepreneurs instead of the – get home from work and like what am i going to watch on tv until i go to bed world which hey that's what people want to do they're welcome to do it sure. but the people who want a little bit more people are like you know what i don't want to just you know look back in my life and realize that i watched breaking bad 18 times <laughs> <laughs> which breaking bad's great i watched it once but like, i'm not gonna watch it again you know? right uh, <laughs> i don't know awesome. we're going to, it's into weird territory because some people will be like i like watching it more than once and i'm like hey do it you do you like if that's you what you like. <laughs> But if you're complaining about not knowing how to make money on the internet, then this advice is for you, right? right. It's for the people who are like, I don't know how to do it. Well, you listen to this, hit rewind, <laughs> listen to this podcast again. Yeah. This specific episode, if you didn't, you know, listen to it yeah. three, four times. Mm, that's awesome. Like We've got, <laughs> yes, like three or four or five times. Yep. Um, but we have some dad joke submissions here in the okay. uh in the comments so i guess we can just go to the weekly dad joke we'll read off what we got and see who who the winner is so here we go time for the weekly dad joke all right so um why where did it go there it is why did the dolphin cross the ocean anybody anybody hmm 
Chris, get, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, Chris, you're going to be the judge. So you, you're, you're the final, you're the final. Uh, like, yeah, you're, you're do you guys always disagree? Like I'm the tiebreaker or what? No, we're going to give you these, these, uh, it looks like there's three dad jokes. You have to pick a winner. Cause we're going to give a, a t-shirt to one of them. Gotcha. Yes. I had so I was I'm, I'm looking back for like a dad joke, but now I can't find it. <clears throat> yes, let us know your dad joke as well. We'll, we'll see if I can find one. We'll, we'll pull out. All right, so this is the first joke. one, the dolphin one. Yes, it says, "Why did the dolphin cross the ocean?" All right, uh, I don't know. Why did the dolphin cross the ocean? To get to the other tide. I mean, it's technically a dad joke. Like it, it, it lacks a little spice. You know, it needs like a little like. <laughs> I mean, it's it's leading the pack, but like it's only because it's the only one there. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. The next one from Caitlin. That one was from Fiona. Um, she bought your book. She will, she will turn it if you don't <laughs> give her the shirt too, probably. Um, <laughs> this is from Caitlin. She said, people think grass don't be wet in the morning, but it do. <laughs> I, like, I like that one. It do. <laughs> yes. I, I, like the, I like the phrasing of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right, I like that. I like that one. All right. Well, they, okay. So we have that, two that one's in the lead. That one's in the lead. Okay. We have two more. Sorry, Fiona. It's, it's Fiona and Kate or Fiona. And uh, okay. Here's one from Linda. Which bear is most condescending? A pan. Duh. Pan. Duh. Condescending. I mean that's yeah. that's got like that's like a kind of a two level joke. <laughs> yeah, it's it's multi multifaceted for sure. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So those are those are the contenders right now. That's three between well, Linda. You gotta, go ahead, give Fiona the, her other one since she her wasn't other in the running okay. the first okay. one. All right, okay. Here, here here's the other one from Fiona. Let's see. It says, "How do you stay warm in an empty cold room?" Any guesses? I'm not going to get it. All right. You go and stand in the corner where it's always 90 degrees. Mm. That That's like really accurate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a geometry. Drug. Like there's no mistaking that one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there, there are your four. Uh, you got the dolphins crossing the ocean to get to the other tide. People think grass don't be wet in the morning but it do how do you stay warm in a cold empty room you, you go to the corner where it's 90 degrees and which bear is the most condescending a panda which one's gonna get it chris i, I gotta give it to the condescending panda bear because i feel i feel like if i gave it to fiona just because she bought the book that would that wouldn't be fair so <laughs> as, as much as i want i think we should give her what anyway well, believe I'll, it or I'll not, her, I'll send her one of your t-shirts. <laughs> believe it or so, not, I think she's already got some, so <laughs> I don't think she needs any more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think she's too upset. Every, everyone's a winner here. They, they were all not terrible. <laughs> That's the you, idea behind a dad joke. What, <laughs> what's what's uh what's your dad joke, Chris? Let's hear what what you have for. I, I could find the, the best one that, that came through. Uh, but one one did come through saying, "Hey, I, I just found out that I'm colorblind. It came out of the purple." <laughs> wait, wait! I yeah. scrolled. There it is. And there's the one. Mm. Did yes, you hear? About, I, I, I don't. I I actually was uh, sharing one a few weeks ago on the show, but it's it's kind of in that same vein, Chris. You heard about the Staples employee that was uh, actually fired. Um, because he was like stealing ink, a ton of ink, just ink and ink and ink. He was caught magenta handed. Mm. Yeah. No, no. I thought that was going to be like a real story. And he was like selling it on like your FBA <laughs> and got busted. Yeah. 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 Cause, yeah. Cause that could have been a true story. Like I was like, is this like joke based on a true story? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how we yeah, some it. sellers. That's where they get their inventory. The <laughs> the <in-cast. laughs> do, do you guys remember like the early days of Facebook groups and people were always talking about like price tankers and someone undercut me? Yeah, I was like, bros, some people out there literally steal their inventory, <laughs> right? 
So yes, they have a lower buy cost than you and they can <laughs> undercut you. And no, there's nothing you can do about it. If it's priced low enough, you ought to buy it, buy it all and sell yeah, it back. I, I guess like, I, I never thought for whatever reason, that thought never occurred to me that people were just stealing their inventory and that's why they could have a lower buy a buy box cost but now that you mention it, it, it i feel like that'd be what, more common than you would think it's either they stole it or they're willing to take a loss on it uh but but whatever it is it's outside of you know the seller's control um uh, but you know those are the things they have to be like hey i don't know how they're doing it it really looks from from where i'm sitting that they're selling at a loss so yeah. either you decide to stop competing on that product or you, you wait them out, or you buy them out, uh, especially if you're a reseller. Like If you're competing with other resellers, you generally have limited inventory. Like when it's gone, mm -hmm. it's gone. You have to get on to your next product, which is why I like people jumping from the reseller kind of model to a seller model where you have your own products, um, right. or you have exclusives or things you can actually control. And you're not just mm -hmm. always at the mercy of you know Walmart's clearance schedule and things like that. Sure. Because um, you can get lucky. You can go to Walmart and make five grand. Yeah, if you're there at the yep. right time, and they're done, quit that. your job. Because yeah, <laughs> you go there next next month. month like, you're not going to make five grand. Hey, right. where's, where's all the clearance stuff? Like, dude, you bought it all. You last bought month. it last month. <laughs> <laughs> we don't just always have that. Like, Walmart is losing money when you do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. I wish I knew how much money I cost Home Depot, because I mean it, it's millions. <laughs> Not that I mean millions is much the Home Depot. You know, they like hundred billion dollars mm -hmm. in sales. Uh, but it was a lot. Yeah. I mean, I was buying stuff so, so under retail. And, and not again, a lot of that was funded by the vendors or uh mm -hmm. they'd have corporate promos or store level, you know, markdown budgets and all these things. So like it's not like they were literally losing money, but um the amount of discount off of retail that I got. Because I used to be a vendor, right? So like I could go in and look at the at the cost like what home people was paying for some of these things i'm like oh my gosh you're paying 350 <laughs> for these and i'm buying them for 99 but hey they were you know they were happy they were they did not like turn my credit card away right they yeah just exactly. run it you know. yeah well uh i just want to say congratulations to linda linda won our dad joke competition linda if you'll reach out to josiah or myself um with which shirt you want on the website yes um you know color size design and then obviously give us your uh address and all of that stuff we'll get one out to you asap chris i wanted to actually kind of circle back at the beginning of the show you talked about um we talked about a, a, several things that you have your hands in on or hands in and then one that was kind of like a surprise thing that uh, yeah, kind of came out of one of the things. Have you? Uh, can you talk? Tell us a little bit about that and what what that's all about. Yeah, it, it's not like super secret. It's just not like out there as like a polished product, and certainly not something mm -hmm. I'm known for. Um, but when I do my you know entrepreneur challenges or when I teach people at KDP, you know, I generally say, look, you should be using your book as a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. You should have some kind of call to action in your book to come back to a Facebook group, come back to a, you know, a web address where you can build an email list, like, like all of these things, like kind of second level. Like, yeah, you got a book out there, but like, <clears throat> let's actually build a business with it and have an email address yeah. or email list that you own and control. Uh, so having that means you need to have a landing page of some kind, mm -hmm. right? Now, I am a little vain on wanting uh, like good domains like a short domain or an easy to say domain. I mean, your, your print on demand cast domain. I'm kind of jealous of like, how did I not think of that? Uh, <laughs> it's pretty like, it, it was sitting there for a while, right? I was like, oh, yeah. like, print on demand was out for years before you guys started your thing. And like, so, but it's good that you guys have it. Cause I would just be sitting on it. So, uh, <laughs> but having a good domain is valuable, right? Like, like it, it can send, it can signal a level of professionalism. It can signal, uh, like a level of like I'm, you're in this for the long haul and not just some like random you know domain. So I always do a kind of a little segment on okay, here's how to buy a domain. If you've never bought one, it's not hard, but this is how you do it. Yeah. And like a little, I usually do like here's here's a place where you can get one page websites, which is usually all that you need, or just forward your domain to something like your Linktree landing page. Or there's like twelve, there's more than twelve. There's probably dozens of them. Uh, like kind of landing page. What what do they call them? Like link and bio aggregators, whatever it is. So you can have multiple links. You'll link to your book. You'll email me. Uh, you'll join my email list. You know, all these different things on one page, completely free, right? And your domain for $8 a year can just forward there. Then you can put the domain on your book, on the cover, on the back cover, whatever it is. 
and people always eat this up. They're like, this is so cool. I didn't know anything about domains. And like I show people how to you know, go to auctions and find expiring domains. So they can say, hey, this one's expiring and I really, really want it and expires in like a month. So maybe I'll wait on it to see if it actually expires. And then here's where it's going to go on auction. And like, here's how you, you place bids. And you can get some really good domains if you just know where to look and are a little bit patient and are willing to spend more than the hmm. minimum $8. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I got a whole list of like valuable, valuable domains. Um, and then I sold two domains last August, uh, not intentionally. I don't consider myself like a, re- a domain kind of reseller or anything, uh, but for significant money. Uh, and like they sent me these offers. I was like, really? Fine. I'll take it. Let's see if they actually close <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. And they both closed. <laughs> wow. uh, and I was like, wow, this is. And, and the marketer in me, right? You guys know, like, I'm, like marketing is probably my, my mm-hmm. favorite part of all this. Uh, it's like, ooh, I just sold. And, and I'm not. But this isn't like a flex. But this is the honest truth. I just sold two domains for a total of one hundred thousand dollars in one month. Now I don't. I didn't sell a hundred grand in domains any other month, ever. Okay, like for <laughs> full transparency. Wow. But the fact they were both in one month is amazing marketing. Like, hey guys, I don't even know what I'm doing, but I sold a hundred grand. I sold six figures in domains in one month last year, and I got the receipts to prove it. Right. Wow. So I'm I'm making sure to to because I want to have like the way this came about is I wanted to make this kind of domain kind of bonus book or bonus mini course to go along with the authorpreneur challenge. Cause that's, I really like the authorpreneur stuff and the KDP stuff. Um, when I told people about this, everybody's like, tell me about the domains. I want to learn more about domains, 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 domains. I'm like, for Pete's sakes, I guess I'll make like a whole product for you guys. But like it, it's all there, but I don't want to present it as a, like an income monetary, like a money making thing. Right. That's not how I would present uh, buying and, and investing and listing domains for sale. But I would present it as, hey, if you listen to my advice, you can put yourself in a great position to pick up some domains that are often underpriced or have never been registered before and put yourself in the position to have them for sale to the right buyer and, and hopefully get a big sale in the four five, six digits. Uh, I can't mm-hmm. guarantee any of that will happen, but you can't put yourself in that position if you don't start buying some domains. If you don't know where to look, yeah. if you don't know some of the, the tips and tricks of, like, I, I, no one's in this space, which is kind of weird that I'm kind of <laughs> stumbling into it. But I, mm-hmm. it does. It's not a place where I will be permanently. Uh, but I would like I'll make this kind of standalone product um, that I'll use as a bonus for anybody that joins the Entrepreneur Challenge. You also get my amazing domain course and. You know, that, that's my plan for that. But mm-hmm. I, honestly, cool. the 90% of the attention and the, and the interest um, that's coming in right now is for the domain stuff. So, But I am mm-hmm. trying to be very careful and, and not present it as like, hey, listen to me and you'll make 100 grand in a month. No, you right. absolutely will not. But sure. you can get the confidence to buy yeah. some domains and put yourself in a good position. And that's that's my goal for domain stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> Linda, the Crazy winner. though, right? Yeah, it is crazy. The, the winner of the T-shirt says, Linda, I have become a domain collector. I need to actually work on selling them now. <laughs> That's like yeah. a whole chapter right there. Yes, you can collect. <laughs> but if they're not available for sale, if they're not listed, then people who want them, they're not going to be able to like reach out and, 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 let, and contact you. So list them for what you're happy with. And if you get an offer, like if it's out there, you can accept offers. So then you get an offer and you can like go back and forth and you know, be willing to sell. Um, mm. they're, just, they're like the original NFTs. Right, it's a digital product. It's unique. Um, yeah, it's the original NFTs. And I bought my first domain in two, 1999. Uh, yeah, I'm doing it over mm-hmm. over 20 years. I used to have like I think 350 was the That's most crazy. I used to have at one time, but I'm trying to get down yeah. under 200. Hmm. Wow! How many domains wow. do you guys have? You must have more than just print on demand cast. Not, I mean, for the for print on demand cast, no, that's it. Um, I have probably, I don't know, 10 of them, but they're all like doing something or have done something. It's not, I'm not collecting them or anything like that. Do you have travisross.com? Um, no, I tried to get it. Um, there's, you can go there and there's some guy, I think he's in Indiana or something. He's like a doctor or something. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, couldn't get that one. Very sad. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to go there, aren't you? You're literally Googling or going to TravisRoss.com. No, I was, I was looking up Ross and like with a dot me at the end, but someone mm. has that. Because mm. you went by that, right? Yeah. Like Rossum? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah Rossum. But see, that's like a little Rossum. trick. You can put like M E on the end. So I did this with my 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 son's domain. His name's David. Um, so I got him the domain Vid Green V I D G R E E N, and I set up an email for him D at vidgreen.com so it's basically <laughs> spells davidgreen.com like a little bit of a, a hack because david green's a common name i can't get davidgreen.com uh, you know, probably the most expensive domain i ever bought was chrisgreen.com i had to buy it from uh wow the original chris green who <laughs> registered it who happened to live like 45 minutes away from me like coincidentally so we went and did the deal in person because like how do you how do you transfer and like you know escrow and like here's a check and all this stuff yeah but it's I don't know. I, I just, I, we said this at the beginning, like I would say that I'm good at spotting opportunities and there's opportunities mm-hmm. with domains. And it might be something that people find a lot more interesting than scanning barcodes at target. Yeah. Right. Now, some people love scanning yeah. barcodes at target. They should do that. They should not stop doing that to come learn about domains and it all goes right <laughs> over their head. Yeah. Um, right. But I, I think people should be, I think people should know at least a minimal about, a, about domains. I've heard people mm-hmm. are, being specific with the, their child's like their new baby's names based on mm. if the domain is available wow are you serious wow that's yeah. nuts that is crazy because they snag it you know they, they, they start snagging social media handles even though like yeah. they'll still be using twitter in like 16 years or facebook wow. in 18 years um yeah but you that know you can snag wild. some of these things and, and hold on to them <laughs> yeah it's okay oh, get this Dot green is an extension. So I have Chris dot green. I have Abby dot green. I don't have David dot green. So that's another guy that has that one. I think I got wow. Jen dot green. Dot green is more expensive than dot com to renew every sure, year. Sure. Um, yeah. But yeah. I haven't set it up. So I could be Chris at Chris dot green. But that's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I, I was, had yet. the thought a couple of years ago about collecting domains. I just didn't know. Where I could potentially list them. So I like I have mine. I have JosiahCFuentes.com. I have that one. But you know, a couple of years ago, the, gov- the governor of Colorado said that if you don't wear a mask, you're a selfish bastard. So I bought SelfishBastardClub.com, and I was like, <laughs> I could do something with this because yeah. I think it's funny that he said that. So um, did it take off? I, or? I didn't know what to do with it. Like I didn't know if I were to sell it. I was like, I'm just going to hold on to it, and then it like it lapsed. I think. I don't know, like in January of this year or something like that. So I, it, I would let it go at this point. Like at the time. Yeah, at the time it would have been. I would have put up a one page website that had a selfish bastard print on the man t shirt, whether it's a merch by Amazon listing or a listing you right. guys mm-hmm. print and ship yourself just to see if it takes off. Right. Yeah. And have like a little MailChimp thing at the bottom. Sign up, you know, hear about new demands or, or sign up and potentially win, you know, a t shirt. And, yeah. you know, it just might take off like a, like a blog or a group or some podcast might just talk about it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you know, it, it maybe doesn't make a million dollars, but maybe it makes you like 12 grand in T-shirt sales. Right. Sure. Just because yeah. you're there to quickly. And that's part of the domain thing. Right. Like when something happens, what domains are available. Right. Like I could have bought Trump dot com, but I saw it. And I was like, wow. You know, <laughs> I I don't I don't even want to touch it. I didn't want to touch it. Yeah, I, and then I refreshed like five minutes later and it was taken. Like I knew it was taken, but like but I didn't want it. And I looked up defund the FBI.com today, uh-huh. which I should have looked it up like a week ago. It was right. actually registered in twenty twenty. Wow. So someone was talking about you need defund to do the FBI. Defund the IRS. Yeah. Possibly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Defund.com, I think, is actually available for like six thousand dollars, which in my opinion, is underpriced. I'm not, mm. I'm not interested in buying it, but to have a, a one word, dictionary word that's being used a lot these days right. for six grand, that's, that's actually, a, that would actually be a good pickup if it's in somebody's budget. Uh, in my opinion, of course, you know, people can have different mm-hmm. opinions. Um, but I'll, I'll give people a link if they want it. Can I, can I, well, you guys can put a link if you want. I'll, I'll let me send you guys yeah. a do whatever. Quick, yeah. it, it's my favorite um, domain name search tool it's called instant domain search.com um it's just my favorite there, there are other ones you yeah. know they they do have like commission based things so if, if you if one's available and you want to buy it and you go to godaddy there's some kind of you know like referral system they have they probably right. make like a quarter uh, right so that, that's how they do it all for free but you can find all the different extensions like i'd like dot io i like dot co 
Um, mm-hmm. Those are actually the domains that I sold. I sold a I sold sell.io for sixty five grand and merch.co for thirty five mm-hmm. grand, uh, like randomly back to back. Right, they had nothing to do with each other. They just happened to be in the same month. Uh, but I missed my merch.co. That was a good domain. That's cool. I bought it. Bought it for fifteen hundred bucks. So fifteen to <laughs> fifteen hundred to thirty five grand. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not losing any sleep over not having it. You know, in the future, I'll probably regret it. Like, oh, it'd be worth more now. But you know, whoever the people who bought it, they put up a like, great looking merch website. So yeah, I'm glad they got That's something wild. that they liked. But yeah, there's there's potential upside with you know I would say minimal risk. I know we're taking the show long, but like minimal risk. I call it a cheap bet. Register a domain, eight bucks for a year. Maybe something happens. Maybe it takes off. Maybe you know it it ends up being worth it. If not, let it expire. It's eight dollars. People waste eight dollars, a lot more right. than eight dollars. A lot. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is eight dollar cheap bet. Something might happen. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually owned Trumpeach, Trumpeachment, and Trumpeached. Uh, dot com for a while, <laughs> nice. which I registered before he even like announced. I was like, "Oh, for Pete's sakes, if he actually gets the nomination, uh, he's definitely <laughs> going to get impeached at some point." <laughs> so I, I grabbed him, but because of like the Trump name, like like GoDaddy mm-hmm. wouldn't list them. Uh, oh. I put them on Flippa for a while, and like I think whatever Trump was impeached, like the, or both times, uh, the media never called it the Trump impeachment, which is what I was like. They gotta call it the Trump impeachment, yeah. right? Like. <laughs> Like, this opportunity. Is, no politics involved, guys. This is just like the sell t-shirts. Uh, so yeah. then, like, I just said, forget it. I just let them all expire. So I'm sure, I'm sure somebody just snatched them up just because they were expiring. A lot of people just, if it expires and they think it has something, they'll register it. Like, I, I let it ex- expire on purpose. I didn't mm-hmm. want to mess with them. Right. Um, but I mean, with all the stuff that's happening in politics, guys, just pay attention. If something right. like kind of sounds interesting, go to instant domain search, see if it's available. Place your eight dollar bet. And, and see what happens <laughs> right there there are worse ways to spend eight dollars in yeah. my opinion <laughs> we'll have to do a whole other show about domains yeah, yeah that's, that's a, really interesting very fascinating and something that would be awesome to learn more about because again i i hear things in the political space all the time and i'm like that would mm-hmm. should i should scoop that domain name up <laughs> do yeah. something with and it then, or list it for sale for us, you could throw a deco store in there, Josiah, and just you know, tweet it out a couple times and see yep. see what happens and people stumble. Forward it to a it. Shopify landing page, or mm-hmm. you can do anything well, you want. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. You can do it pretty fast easy to and quick and cheap. Yeah, like it'd be pretty easy to to take advantage of some of the tools that we have. You know, yep. with with our print on demand stuff that just goes right into our production Ooh. if somebody actually does buy. You know what I should do? That's All right, so I'll, I'll put you guys in the domain course, uh, in, in some like as a one page. Look, if you if you're just making a one off, uh, oh, yeah. product, yeah, contact these guys. Right, they yeah. they can. We'll give you a link that end. they can. They can sign up for a store, and then we have all the videos. Josiah's done all the videos to like say yeah. here. Um, this is how you list the thing, you know, get your design, yep. boom, it's, you have a, you have a website and you tie in your domain to it. You know, all of that stuff can, can be done relatively quickly. Yep. Could you put a MailChimp JavaScript on an individual Shopify page? Oh, well, we're, we're not talking Shopify. We're talking using one of, um, our, it's called. Oh, you got like your total own landing page. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's, and then you yeah. tie that, and, and you can actually have that brand. You know, it can be printondemandcast.com can be a merch page basically in Deco, right. and I think you probably could create some type of a box that had a email capture as well. Yeah, yeah, they have that. They've got that. That would time. be useful. Yeah, someone comes along like, hey, but I here's the product, here's the email list. Like, you, mm-hmm. you could literally do this in ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, let's let's talk a little bit more about that as I, I kind of work on this kind of domain yeah. thing. It's the same type of thing. It's, it should be a short course, but I have to explain what a domain is. I have to explain sure. what the who is is. I mm-hmm. to... <laughs> and I, I I make my courses almost too too thorough, but it works because like if you actually read the book and watch the videos, you don't have any questions at the end. Like sure, mm-hmm. I cover everything. So <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, so sorry if you own it. The book is really big. You don't have to read all of it <laughs> to get to get the gist of it. Um, but it, it covers everything. Any mm. any stumbling block you might have, this will show you how to get yeah. over it, get past it, get through it. 
That's awesome. So Chris, why don't you just take a second and shout out some of your, you know, your socials and whatever. I know it's all Chris Green, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I am. But yeah, so how can people, yeah. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, my, yeah, my two main websites, of course, chrisgreen.com and domain that I bought after I sold those domains, authorpreneur.com. Uh, it was available for sale. I sent them an offer that I didn't think they'd take, and then they took it. I was like, great. love that domain for that price. <laughs> uh, so yeah, authorpreneur.com and chrisgreen.com. I'm authorpreneur on Instagram. I'm authorpreneur on TikTok. I'm authorpreneur on YouTube. I'm easy to find. I'm facebook.com slash chris for Pete's sakes. Like, yeah. You can find me if you're if you need to if you need to look. And I'm in your group. Just tag me in your group if someone has a question. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure we'll do this again sometime. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Three years. One one hundred percent. Yeah. So Linda said that it uh she would love a whole show about domains. So perhaps we will have to That's get... what I'm like, yeah, that everybody wants to talk about domains, which hey, I'll be I'm happy to. I have a lot I realize I have a lot to offer about domains. Uh, even mm-hmm. though it's not what I'm known for, but <laughs> sure, we can talk domains. Yeah, yeah, that'd be super cool. Once you get your once you get your uh, course finished, you know that'd be great to have you back on. You can, you know, talk about that and then um, promote that to our listeners. I'm sure they would eat that up. Yeah, we'll Very do cool. a giveaway. Right there, we go. We'll, we'll give away some books and courses. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Awesome, well, fun. Chris. Thanks again for uh, for taking time and. And uh, hanging out with us here for the last hour for the two-year anniversary of the show. It is the birthday of the Print On Demand cast. Everyone's having a good time. <laughs> All right, enough. Uh, it's enough. It's enough Enough celebration. Uh, but yeah, thanks again so much for, for coming on. And uh, we will connect soon. I'm excited to learn more about uh, domains because it intrigues me. But yeah, yeah, thanks, man, for coming on. Sounds good. Congratulations on two years, guys. All right. Thanks yeah. so much. All right. Everybody, thank you guys so much for watching along with us and uh, interacting with us for the dad jokes. Again, Linda, let us know what size of shirt do you want? Uh, what mm-hmm. design do you want? What color do you want? There's so many options. Yes. You can let us know. Uh, <laughs> and we'll be happy to get you that shirt. And as always, if you're not listening to this live, you missed out. And the best way to get to the action, to know what's happening is printondemandcast.com slash Facebook. That is how you find these things out. That's how you join the conversation. That's how you tag Chris in a post with a question to get his attention about domains or books or entrepreneur or see if you have an excuse he hasn't heard of and have him come up with a response to it. You know what I mean? Like that's how you get the interaction with, with all of us and join the community and join the conversation. And as always, wherever there are podcasts, the POD cast is there for you. Stitcher, Apple, Google, Spotify, Anchor, all of them. There's so many of them now. So <laughs> find us, like, subscribe, and as always, if you have time, leave a five-star review and let us know what you think of the show, what you thought of the two-year anniversary. Give us a dad joke. Whatever you want, write it in the box. As long as it's got five stars, we'll pay attention. That's usually the deal. Uh, but thank you guys so much <laughs> for joining us, and we'll see you next time right here on the Print On Demand cast. See ya. Hey, babe, thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Print On Demand cast. We hope you enjoyed the Totally Tubular show. If you've got a question or a suggestion for the show, send Travis and Josiah an email at info at printondemandcast.com. Want to be wicked nice? Take a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe now so you don't miss next week's episode. See you next time for sure.